Hi, this is Peter. In this video, I will show you how to install Minikube that will allow you to run a Kubernetes cluster locally on your computer. The first thing that you need to do is to uh, check if your computer supports virtualization. The easiest way to do this is to use one of these commands based on the OS you're using. Copy paste the command, run it in the terminal, and the output of the command will tell you if your computer supports virtualization or if it doesn't. If I run the command on my Mac, you'll see that the output contains the word VMX, which means that the feature is supported. Next step is to install the hypervisor. You have three options here, uh, HyperKit, VirtualBox, or VMware Fusion. I'll go with the VirtualBox. You can go to the website uh, and download the package based on your OS and then install it. When the installation completes, Open the virtual box, make sure it runs, and that there are no errors. Once we've verified that you can run virtual box and there are no errors, uh, we can move on with installing the Minikube. We will be using a package manager called Brew. You can go to brew.sh to download it, and then you can use it to install different packages. Let's open the terminal and install Minikube. So type brew cask install Minikube. This command will install Minikube as well as Kubernetes CLI, kubectl. So once this is installed, let's just double check that everything is good. Let's type Minikube version to get the version and let's try to run kubectl. With this installed, let's try and run Minikube VM. So we're gonna type Minikube start and we're gonna specify the amount of RAM we want the VirtualBox VM to have. Let's specify 16 gigabytes of RAM and four CPUs. These are the recommended numbers from the STO's website. Anything less than that, and you might run into a bunch of failures such as image pull failures or kubectl failures on the host and even a complete lockup of the virtual machine. So if you can, provide as much memory as as many CPUs as you can for STO to run smoothly. Now, if you only want to use Kubernetes without Istio, lower number is completely fine. Starting Minikube can take a little while, anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how fast your internet connection is. What is happening is Minikube is pulling down the ISO image for the VirtualBox VM, then it needs to pull all the images for Kubernetes, finally it launches Kubernetes, and then it waits for all the services to start up. Once Minikube is up and running, you can run kubectl get nodes to check that there is one node called Minikube and it's ready. Also, you can check that there are some pods that are all up and running and ready. Let's look at some interesting commands Minikube has and see how to use them. If you are more of an UI person, you can use the Minikube dashboard command. This command launches a proxy to the dashboard service running inside the cluster and it opens the dashboard in the browser. You can use the Kubernetes dashboard to get an overview of things that are running inside your cluster. The Minikube status command shows the status of your Kubernetes cluster. You can use this command to check if everything is okay with your cluster. Another command that you will probably frequently use is the IP command. This command will show you the Minikube's IP address and you can use it to access the services that are running inside your cluster. If you ever run into issues with Minikube, you can always use the logs command. This command will get you the logs of the running instance and it's used for debugging. Since Minikube can use a lot of resources, it makes sense to stop your cluster when you're not using it. Just use the Minikube stop command and then once you're ready, use Minikube start to restart the existing cluster. You can always create a new cluster if you wish. Just use the minus P flag and provide the cluster name when running Minikube start. Let's create a deployment and show how you can access the services running inside the cluster. I will use the kubectl create command to create a deployment called hello. This deployment will use a hello world image as well. Once the deployment is created, you can use the kubectl get deploy command to get the status of the deployment. You can also use the kubectl get pods command with the watch flag 
to watch the pod's status. Now that we have the pod up and running, we also need a service we can use to access this pod. We will create a service named hello, and the service will be of a node port type. The node port type means that we want to expose the service on a static port on every node in the cluster. Since we only have one node, the service will be exposed on that node only. Let's switch back to the terminal and deploy the service. If you run kubectl get service, you will notice that in addition to the port 8080 we define in the YAML, the service also gets a node port. Using this node port and the minikube IP command I showed earlier, we can curl to the address and we'll get the response from the service that's running inside the cluster. Similarly, you could use minikube service command and let minikube deal with the IP address and the node port and open the service inside the browser. Another way to expose your services from the cluster is to use the load balancer type. If we would be running a cluster in the cloud, the load balancer setting would expose the services through the cloud provider's load balancer, and we would get an external IP address we could use to access the service. However, since we're using Minikube, there's no cloud provider and load balancer, hence the external IP column will always stay in the pending state. Even though we're running the cluster locally, we can still use the load balancer type and then use the node port and the Minikube IP address to access the service. Another Minikube command you can use to access your services exposed at load balancer type is the Minikube tunnel command. The Minikube tunnel command creates a route to all services inside the cluster that are deployed with the load balancer type. What that means is that if we get all the services, you'll see that we actually got an external IP this time. And if we crawl to the external IP and the port that we defined in our service, we can access the service. This is all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in more Istio, Service Mesh, Kubernetes, and cloud-native content, check out learnistio.com.